This episode of MMA Notes is brought to you by HostGator, one of the top web hosting providers around. Save 60% off of shared hosting for three years with code MMA60. JNP Cycles, the best aftermarket parts and accessories for your motorcycle. Save up to 30% off with code MMAN. Vitamin World, nutrition starts at the source. Save 10% off with code MMA0314. Tech for Less, get 5% off with code MMA5OFF. The Fence Soap, the ultimate soap for wrestlers, jiu-jitsu, and MMA athletes. With the new peppermint oil bars and shower gel. Use code MMA Nuts for 15% off. Hey fans, this is MMA Nuts, episode 384. 384! My name is Ingo Weigold. Matt Griffith, this is MMA Show. Bye my fans, for my fans, walk the line between serious and ridiculous. It's funny, every time we do the show, I say the number and then I throw up fingers and I never get the finger combination you, right. You I'm just like, what? <laughs> Eight fingers? Just getting gang symbols at this point. That's for our hearing impaired the audience. I like to be multicultural okay. and lingual. Yes, we are non prejudiced against any type of. We are predatory. Handi- not handicapped. We prejudiced. are predatory. Yes, we're like caged animals. That's right. <laughs> Rabid caged caged animals. Against, rage against <laughs> the machine. Rage <laughs> against the machine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, Catwoman, how's it going? <laughs> Getting it in for 2018. Going well. Uh, I heard Catwoman's big is it? for 2018. Is she? I don't know. Is she? Can you buy the Catwoman outfit? Like, is this purchasable? I'm sure. I thought the original Catwoman was pretty hot. Catwoman outfit? Yeah, Michelle Pfeiffer? No, no, like the 1950s version. Oh, that's the original Devon. original? Something or other? No, Michelle Pfeiffer. That was some hot shit. You don't like that? You can have her. I'll take the Holly Berry one. Yeah. You're not a fan of that one. Uh... I have a hard time. Every time I think of Halle Berry, I think of her in that scene with uh, Billy Bob Thornton in that fucked up movie that she was in, it. where he's like railing her, and it's like a really weird scene. It's offensive. No, it's not. Actually, it, it was really raunchy, but like it was a hard thing to watch. And I just every time I think of her, that's what I think of. So hmm. getting yeah. railed, getting railed by Billy Bob Thornton. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> Bad Santa. He's yeah. in there. He's, does he rail someone in every movie? He's I in? think he does. <laughs> it's in his, his contract. <laughs> <laughs> it's my deal, like, man. So, uh, I mean, who's I, getting railed on the set? <laughs> everybody. The chair, the table. <laughs> That's right. Um, but yeah, what happened this weekend? Anything fun? Well, we had a couple you well, a couple MMA events. Well, we had a Bellator in London and a UFC in Liverpool. Ooh. And I'll just say this. All you UK fans who like to woo at every event, Please kill yourselves. <laughs> the public service is not <laughs> from MMA Nights. That's boring. That's all I heard on both broadcasts. Woo, woo. What is the fascination with the woo? It's not even the right sport. It came from the WWE, from some retard. That's why they do it. They, oh. think, they think they're watching WWE. Apparently. Maybe. The judges sure did. Oh, we'll get to that. We'll get the scoring to that. was not as, as expected. Oh, my God. Off the charts. Just off the charts. Okay. So let's start with the Bellator 200. You had Gegard Musasi versus Rafael. Cavallo. Mm-hmm. And fucking Musasi is just dominant, gets the takedown, ground him, gets the back, and just pounds him out. Now becomes the Bellator middleweight champion. And he posts a picture of his fucking belt collection now. So he's got like a, a Cage Warriors, a Strike Force, he's got two Dream Belts, and now the Bellator. The only thing missing from the collection the UFC. It, Yeah. And UFC decided, well, let's get rid of a top fucking. Middleweight. It's a stupid move. Yeah. And the the interesting is thing from this fight, the takeaway is you have Roy McDonald wants to fight Musasi and Musasi wants to fight Roy McDonald. We were just talking about that. So it I looks like, like they're it. gonna make that fight happen. Okay. Those are the top guys in, in that Oof. I would say they might be the top two guys in the whole of Bellator. I put yeah. As far as like complete fighters, yes. Yes. I think they're up there. They're they're in the top three or four for sure. Yeah. So And then you, do you want to even speculate on that fight? Like, who do you favor, Musasi versus McDonald? That's a tough fight. Yeah, I'm still not. I'm still not 100 percent convinced that Rory has ever recovered from that Lawler fight. And I don't think Lawler has either. What no, I, I, I think Musasi can box him up pretty good and get him kind of, you know, back in that kind of condition, and that'll be bad for Rory McDonald. I, I think technically they're both pretty good, but Musasi's better. He's very, very technical. That guy is ridiculous, man. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> He's like crazy. Fucking and fighting and training. Yeah. What else can a man do? I don't know. Th- those are good things to be doing. <laughs> then be very good at them, right? So I'm good at all of these things. Yeah. He's so relaxed. I would love to hang no, out with him so for a little while. Like, like, Rory's like axe murder relaxed, where Musasi's kind of like, 
a stoner. <laughs> in a way, yeah, he's a like, little bit. He's like kind of high all the time. I don't know. It's just like, hey, whatever. I don't know. Whatever I do, I do it very well. Yeah. <laughs> and that weird high pitched yeah, voice yeah. he had. And then Roy McDonald likes to cut avocados and put the knife through his hand. Remember he's when got he did a that? Soft spoken, deep voice. Yes. Psycho. Let's talk slow. Slow talk. Mm -hmm. Then we had MVP versus David Rickles in a fight that, Jesus Christ, MVP just lit this man up. And I think it was in the second round, MVP hits him with another right hand. And he, I think his strike landing percentage was damn near 100%. Wow. Everything he threw landed. And then this last punch that hits, Rickles waves it off. He's done fighting. I'm like, I'm good. I'm good. Nothing else is going to come. So he just quits no. in, the, in the cage. And, you know, MVP puts on the Avengers, whatever fucking glove with the Infinity Stones in. And mm -hmm. Does his little shout out. But very, it's, it's cool watching him just light people up. I enjoy that. Yeah, and rumor is he's supposed to fight Paul Daly next, but we'll see if that is happens. Paul happy now. Did they have the conversation? I don't know if they've had that conversation. He wants his money. Well, we don't know making thirty thousand a fight. It seems weird unless he got some kind of a signing bonus for Paul Daly. Seems like a bigger star than thirty grand. Yeah, I mean he did hit Kos Josh Koscheck after the belt. You should get paid for that. That's right. Uh, he did us a public service. Yes. Nobody liked Koscheck. No, whatever happened to that guy? He retired. I don't know. It was like him and Bobby Southworth. <laughs> you gotta go back to the tough show. Remember, really? they were outside, and I think it was a drunk Chris Lieben that they were pouring water on. Oh, that's right. Were they pouring water wow. or peeing on him? Pouring water, because okay. if they peed on him, I think there would be more fisticuffs than yeah. there already were. And how I remember that, I have no fucking idea. I remember it, yes. Okay, no, just like yesterday, when I actually would watch the tough show. It was good right? back then. Yeah, that's when it was original. Because they were just regular people. No, yeah, it's like weirdness. We're not hiring you because you're a personality. Mm -hmm. And then the other, the last fight was the Phil Davis versus Linton Vassell, and pretty uneventful fight until Davis decides to throw a head kick and knock him the fuck out. So nice. good for him with his pink, all pink shorts, you know, repping the pink. Repping the pink man, he's all that. That's true. That's Bellator 200 in a nutshell. Good event, Woo! though. If I got a stack, if I got to, you know, I watch both events. If I go Bellator 200 or UFC, mm, Bellator 200. It's much better, huh? Even though it's on fucking tape delay, so I got to avoid Twitter and Facebook all day. Uh -huh. Can we just televise it at the same time like the UFC did? They televised it live. So I would try to avoid spoilers, and luckily I did all day. So I could watch it in the evenings. Unabated. I see. If that makes sense. I don't Versus know. Versus masturbated. That's right. Let me try to click on this link for you real quick as we I'm switch afraid. over to the to UFC and go. They, they tweeted this one out. Waiting, waiting. Oh, it wants to download some porn. Shh. Don't need download any more porn. We've got enough. <laughs> oh, wait, this is Twitter. Oh, can't play the video on this browser. Please try a different browser. <sighs> you know what? Do you want me to talk about my story related to this? While you're doing that, hang on. Was it about who's Dar it about? Darren Till and Sam Thompson. Because that's going to go too long. Uh, what else would you like to talk about? News wise? No, I'm just kidding. It'll know. take me a second. I'm waiting. It's uncomfortable. I just got to remember that. Uncomfortable pause in the show. It's all right. We could do a. Are I singing a show tune? Yeah. Would you like to sing? <laughs> Strangers in the night. Oh, I don't know. How about putting on the rents? <laughs> I don't know. That's like. Fucking spent yeah, dude. Da, 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 plays da, all the da, time. Da, 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 da. Here's a, a girl has no name and go. Oh, she has a. Wait, what was it? UFC oh. tweeted it out. She has a name that's. Uh, she's a famous actress. Yeah, a girl that has what's no her, name. What's her name? Yeah, what's her name? In real life, I don't know. Maisie something or other? Williams? She's quite fetching looking. She's short though, isn't she? Yeah. Holding up the Darren Till and Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. So, where do you want to start with this Darren Till missing weight motherfucker? You can't tell a guy motherfucker. You can't? What about a daddy fucker? No. Yeah, you don't hear that very often. You, you daddy about? fucker you. you. Fa that would be like a father <laughs> fucker. You father fucker I like you. That. Maybe that's our staple, you father fucker. It doesn't roll off the tongue. It's <laughs> it does not. Though. It does not. Father fuckers. Uh, two Fs don't work out. No. It's too harsh. Yeah. Uh, what do I want to talk about? Uh, I was going to go right to his post-fight comments, but we, we can wait. There until... Yeah, let's, let's go weight cutting, fight, and then comments. So, okay. so he did not make weight. 
Yeah, he weighed in at 174 and a half, and then luckily Wonderboy, I don't know if he had a choice in this matter, but you can't have Darren Till, who's goddamn fucking star over there in Liverpool, a hometown boy, not fight the main event. Like, who, who's going to be your main right. event? He's got to fight. So Wonderboy agrees to fight him, but Till has to weigh in less than 188 pounds on the day of the fight. Okay. He weighed in at 187 and some change. So mm -hmm. Till said he had to starve and dehydrate himself again to make the 188 pound <laughs> weight <laughs> fucking thing the next day. So I don't health wise, I don't know how good that is to double weight cut in two days. It's great for your health. Yeah. Amazing. And your brain too. And then the other weird thing was they didn't let the UFC didn't let the media come to the second weigh in. Really? Yeah. A little fishy in my book. If you're gonna have a weigh in for everybody and then this guy gets a special weigh in, but no media. So that's telling me just in case he doesn't make it, mm -hmm. he's gonna make it. No matter what. Yeah. So, but then what does that mean if we're going to have a guy, so he weighs, just even if he, he weighs 188, let's call it 188, mm -hmm. he probably weighs well so north of 200 when he walks in the octagon, but you basically we have a light heavyweight fighting at welterweight and whatever. It's cool. Yeah, that's the norm, Matt. <laughs> that's what it. happens. <laughs> I love it. Then why weight classes? Like, why, why the charade? Uh, because they have to prove they can make the weight for a few minutes. <laughs> no, let's just put towels in front. Yeah, it's and, just like you know. a minute or two, and then you can gain the weight back. Yeah. So, I don't, I don't know. know. There's, there's got to be rules in general. You can't just have chaos and anarchy. Well, when it comes to weights, I think we already have chaos and anarchy. It doesn't matter. But let me just say this. This was a boring fucking tactical fight, which I have no interest in. Mm -hmm. You have Stephen Wonderboy Thompson going backwards the whole fight. Darren Till going forwards. Usually a recipe for the judges to score it one way. I, I scored it for Thompson. I thought he had at least three of the five rounds, even mm. though in the fifth round Till did drop Thompson. Mm -hmm. But there was also a lot of hand touching going on during the fight. Like, oh, almost like it was a sparring match. Like, oh, mm. nice job. You hit me good. Yeah, yeah. I hate that buddy-buddy shit. Like, you want you them to kill each other. Well, you can do that. You either do it before the fight or after the fight, not during the fight. What do you think about it? You good? Uh, I'm okay with them starting starting of the round, end of the round, but during, it's confusing. You're right. It just kind of sends a weird message. Because you're not. It, to me, it sounds like you're not treating this as a, a do or die situation. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's like there's no consequence. Like, oh yeah. man, you got me. We're not going to hurt each other out here. Fuck that. We're out here. Killer be killed. Finish somebody, right? <laughs> yes. That's uh, yeah, him. Right. So I hear you. When we go to the scorecard, Till gets the unanimous decision. Two, two judges give it 49-46 and 48-47 from third. And I mean, it was close. I, I wouldn't call it a robbery, but, you know, if... if we have stupid rules and stupid judges. And one, I mean, one of the other fights, I think it was the Jason Knight. What the fuck's his name? Maquan Americani. Mm -hmm. One of the judges got, scored at 30 27 for Knight, and then the other judges scored both for Americani. And like, you can't have. We're doing this big swing again. Yeah, it's a right? huge swing. So that was weird. So, what about the. Post fight, Darren well, till you know, talking about the title shot, uh, his comment on this when they asked him is uh, is basically said, um, uh, "Give it to Steven. He made weight and he's still number one and beat more guys than me. So give it to him. I'm a realist. I'm not going to sit here and bullshit anyone. I'm gonna. I'm not going to bullshit myself and I'm not going to bullshit you, the fans. So give it to Steven. I'm just going to go and train. I missed weight, so I don't feel I deserve a title shot anyway. So there you go." So, uh, what are your thoughts on this? He basically was like, you know, I fucked up. Yeah, I won, but I don't feel like I should get the title shot because of these reasons. Do you think that's a fair? Well, my thoughts are similar to Chael Sonnen. Cut or move up a weight class. Like, he can't yeah. fucking fight at 170. This isn't his first time missing weight either. No. So, he should have to fight at middleweight. And and now, you know, Wonderboy is in a, a f quite the pickle because... <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, you've lost twice to the champion, uh -huh. and now you're number one, and you just lost to the number eight guy. 
Where does that put him? At number seven. Yeah, and where do you rank Till? I don't move Till up. No. But Wonder Boy's been on this re track record of like these slow, boring tactical yeah. fights all of a sudden. Yeah. What happened to the flashy? Well, it's it's that Anderson Silva type counter striking where ah. he's waiting, waiting, and then if the other guy's kind of waiting, waiting, you get this awkwardness. Even though Till was moving forward, it was uh, moving forward but not necessarily engaging. I think there was. There's some weird stat. Each guy maybe landed 40 strikes the entire fight. Whoa, not very many. No, no. Sounds very tactical. Way, exactly. And I don't want to see that. Five rounds? Like five <laughs> rounds of this shit. What do they do? Dance with each other oh the whole time? Oh my god. Just oh. like land something. Go for broke. And Till yeah. was trying to clinch up and, and work knees and stuff. But, you know, he was successful with some of the sidekicks. He sidekicked. Wonder Boy in the knee a couple times, like that oblique kick, and like buckled his knee, kind of like John Jones did a rampage that one time. Yeah, but for the most part, not a good fight. Not a good fight. I don't think I have anything else to say, but moving right along. Okay. Jason Knight versus Maquan Romero County could be round of the year. The really? first first round, yeah. And Knight dropped Amir Khani with two uppercuts at some point. And then there's this point here where he's holding Amir's on top, Mirakani's on top. He's holding the biceps and sticking his tongue out. They're going, ah, Looks very they're sensual. talking, they're talking shit to each other. And at some point, I forgot what Knight said. Something like, "You got a weak chin, boy. Come get it, bitch." Mm -hmm. They're gonna fight. So they're just yapping back and forth. And Knight was content just to work off his back. He's trying to throw up submissions and. Maquan being on top wasn't doing anything and somehow yeah. that scores more points than being on the bottom and being active or being on bottom and neutralizing with the guy because you're on doing. top man it looks like you're yeah, dominating that's what it looked like so he gets you know one guy gave it that's where it's three judges scored the yeah. entire fight for tonight and even with the the two overcuts and dropping him like, man yeah. draw it at worst but it's not not for Mirakani, but he got the he got the win. So yeah, that's all I have for those two cards. I like the Bellator one more. I just wish it was shown at the right time. Yeah. All right, what do you got for news? Uh well, let's see. Michael Bisming announcing retirement from MMA. So sad. You don't get to see him to get KO'd anymore. Yeah, I was hoping one more. You really want one more? Henderson. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. But had a good career, had a good run. Yeah. Not always, not always well liked. Uh, played the heel quite a bit, personality-wise. A little abrasive at times. But I gotta say, overall body work, not bad, for a white guy. Yeah, not from, bad. From the UK. Hard worker. Hard worker. He's working hard. Not Let's always think. honest though. Well, I saw they were showing some behind-the-scenes shit on the UFC Tonight Show. Yeah. So you had Bisming was on there and Michael Chiesa sitting next to him. And there, there's a moment that they show when they were in a commercial break and Michael Bisming fell off his chair and almost <laughs> fell off the set. <laughs> and he, he goes to Chiesa said, man, I wish that would have happened during a live show. And Michael replied and said, I'm 1-0 against chairs. You are 0-1 against dollies. Ooh. And then also they showed their reactions to the Darren Till Wonder Boy fight, and you could see Bisbing mouth, that's bullshit. But then when the show came back on, he's like, oh yeah, you know, he didn't really comment on Till winning or losing. He was more like, uh, yeah, that was the right decision. So how do you feel, I want to do a separate question. I know we're talking about retirement and whatever, but should he be loyal to his countrymen or should he be honest as an analyst, um, it's hard to say because we've certainly had moments where things have not always been on the surface at times, right? Like we feel a certain way and we talk about things a certain way. So I don't know. Maybe they play play the game. Oh, for 100 percent. Yeah, with him. I mean, he's, he's till is supposed to be the next Michael Bisping for the UK. Yeah. So can he say the guy didn't lose or didn't win that fight? If he's being honest. Well, you, know? you get torn. Like we, we're very biased for Damian Maya here on the show. Of course, but I don't <laughs> think I've ever said that he's won or lost a fight no. where he. I'm, I'm, I'm unbiased when it comes to that. 
No, I no. That's kind of what I was saying earlier. Like we we have our biases, but maybe sure. he just has his in this way because he's a countryman. So it's like, hmm. I don't know. It's hard to say. Well, I think if you're an analyst on a TV show, you have to be unbiased. And if I've just seen you say bullshit to that decision, it's fucked up. You got to call it. You got to get that payment rolling in, Matt. That's how it gets paid. Well, he does a good job up there. I'll give him credit, but yeah. you got to be honest. Yeah. So maybe he rethought it, and he was like, "Yeah, I've overreacted." I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> the way you overreacted right off the chair. Hey, hey shit! Oh, fucking chair. Yeah. Um. Oh, do you want to talk about GSP on the yes, Rogan podcast? Yeah, it's going to be a long, long thing. I will just say that was probably the best podcast he's had in. I don't know, three years? Since the last time GSP was done. <laughs> no, this is better because he was actually himself. He's finally comfortable in his own skin, and uh. he's never been that. And I think if you give him another year or two, he'll be even more comfortable. Mm -hmm. He's got a better perspective on life now. He was very open, honest. He was swearing a lot during the podcast. Like, wow, this is a side of GSP we don't normally see. Yes. And he was talking about when he was training for the Bisping fight, and he said Faraz, basically, he's, he's an asshole because he was telling George's training partners to try and knock George out in sparring, wow. and they'll get a bonus. And he's like, I hate him. He's trying to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Why was he doing that? Just so they would fight him extra hard. Uh -huh. So he'd be pr well prepared when he got in uh, the octagon. Wow. He was talking about the foundation of a training camp. And I think it, I, I think the other takeaway is that GSP has so much technical knowledge about MMA that I was kind of surprised, but you gotta think he's with Frost Sahabi and John Donaher, so mm -hmm. he is absorbing so much and retaining. So he's talking about the foundation of a training camp, and he said it goes into three stages. It's like, it's kind of a pyramid. He said the bottom of the pyramid is the physical layer. It's basically, are you in shape? He said next is the technical layer. Do you know what to do with your knowledge? Mm -hmm. And then third is the tactical layer. Mm. Like, where can I take you out of your comfort zone? Right. And he says, his coaches are masters of this. And Freddie Roach is in boxing. And you think, well, there's another mind that also he's using as far as his coaches. But yeah, when he's talking about the Bisbing fight. He said Bisbing messed him up because he was expecting Bisbing to come at him right away and take him out, but he was moving around a lot. He said, especially in the second round where he was running around a lot. And then he made the adjustment in the third round where coaches said, slip the right hand and come over the top with the left hook. And then that's where he caught him and then mm -hmm. got them to the ground and then sunk in that rear naked choke. And I, I think he was talking about, I don't know if I wrote that down, but we was talking about the training and that they would start in positions mm. so that you're constantly, it's none of this tap, tap, go. It's like, you're already in some sort of a position, so you're either trying to get out of it or wow. trying to finish. Why? And you're, you're doing rounds of that, so that you're constantly in a state of engagement, not in this, okay, we're out here in space doing something. Oh, we're already engaged, yeah, yeah, yeah. and now we gotta, you gotta make something happen. So that's how he felt he was able to rack faster. This is huh. when he's doing uh, the jujitsu. Yeah, yeah. That makes like, a lot of sense. That's interesting. Huh. So that he said, when he teaches classes now, that's how he does it. Okay, I like that. Yeah, so it makes sense. Uh huh. He also said he was thinking too much when he was fighting towards the end of the career before he took that break. And I think that was some of his fights were not the most exciting, right? No, and he took a lot of punishment in those last three fights, four fights that oh. he had prior to coming back. More, more so than any other time combined, really. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting. He also said he never slept well before any of his fights, and he slept well before one of them. Which one? Matt Serra. Ah. <laughs> he said he accepts the stress of fighting now. Says the Nate Diaz fight is a lose-lose fight for him. Nate, or he needs something exciting. He said 155 pound fight for the title sounds exciting. Wow. But he's not really committed to a Conor McGregor or a Khabib. So I don't know where it's going to be. I'd rather see Conor. Khabib is just too similar of a fighter. Well, there, what if you do the 165? You create a 165 class, mm -hmm. GSP versus Conor McGregor. I like that. Right. 
And then there was that other part where he's talking about Nick Diaz, and I'll read his quote. <laughs> yeah. This is fucking I so hilarious. thought that was real for a minute. And I don't know I'll do it in his voice, but I gotta confess, Joe. I gotta confess. I was so scared of fighting Nick Diaz, so we poisoned his IV, but we survived. So I was even more terrified. <laughs> so all the athletic commission was on my payroll. So they tricked the way in, and I made it. But he went through. So I was even more terrified. So the alien abducted me and put the gamma rays to increase my strength like the Ulk. He doesn't say the H's. The Ulk. Yeah. yeah. Like a performance enhancing drug. But the fight was still happening. So right before I put some glass and cement in my gloves to make sure. And I still had a crazy fight. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to see him joking around like that. Mm-hmm. Normally wouldn't do that. Yeah, no. I really. I, and first, I really thought he was being serious. I was, I was like, "Wow, he's gonna confess." And I'm like, "Ah, oh, you <laughs> asshole, you got me good." Yeah. Like he's not confessing; he's just bullshitting us. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm very itchy right now. I don't know what the problem is. It's your hat. Is it my hat? He said. He said he thinks Nick Diaz can beat Tyron Woodley. I think he could. I really even do. even being out for that long, he still I think thinks he could. I, yeah. I agree. I think he would frustrate Tyron. Yes, and talk shit the whole time. Tyron wouldn't handle it, especially when you can't break. You can't break. How's your Nick? mama? How's your mama? Yeah. My kids. Tell your mommy to shut the fuck yeah. up. Yeah. How's your? Yeah, how you like? Is your mama gonna like when I beat your ass yeah. in front of her? Yeah. It's all oh, day man. long. Oh man, that'd be great. I'd love to see that. Yeah. Men for that. Is that gonna happen? I hope so, but who knows? Because Nick Diaz has got his own bullshit. Like, mm -hmm. there's some domestic charges. He got yeah. arrested. I'm not gonna t speculate. I'm but sure he's innocent. They'll work that he out. Yeah, nothing to do with it. GSP also said the UFC did not want Johnny Hendricks to take the random drug testing before his fight with GSP. And GSP said he regrets taking the fight with Hendricks because of the drug testing and wish he would have just told off the UFC and said, here, take my belt. Yeah. Wow, okay. Says in the future we'll all be gamers because sports will be all these superhumans with gene editing and whatnot. And it's all going to be about playing uh, fucking games. I see that. Super passionate about paleontology for whatever reason. I don't understand that, but okay. He says his favorite fighters are Chael, Nick Diaz, and Conor McGregor. Uh. Tito Ortiz back in the day. He said he, the good guys are boring. So he likes the dark side, not the Jedi. Yeah, the alien side. And he likes the Cobra Kai, and he, he wants to see him beat the shit out of the Karate Kid. Yeah. <laughs> and he says he doesn't like the fight. I think that's interesting. We figured out from a few of the guys they don't like the fight. Yeah. He learns to accept things. He likes his fear. He talked about uh, he, he sparred Shane Carwin once. <laughs> he said it was a lot of. He's like, you gotta fucking move, stick and move. <laughs> that guy, <laughs> like, holy shit, he fought. He's like 280. He's twice and, your weight. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. And Jesus Christ. And he said he's really into efficiency. And then the last thing he said, he's never seen any blow from. Any human being harder than Joe Rogan's spinning back kick. It's the hardest thing I've ever seen, Joe. How do you do it? <laughs> it's crazy, man. <laughs> and then they were going to work on it again after the oh, podcast. So did they post it? I didn't see any videos, but I think I think George had to run somewhere else. But yeah. it, was, it was an awesome podcast and well worth the three-hour listen. Nice. I might have to check it out. I saw bits and pieces of it. Yeah. It's just nice to see him finally be himself. Yeah, yeah, you know, of course. Relax. He said there's still some other shit he can't quite talk about yet, but He's one gay. day. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. I think that's neither here nor there. Probably more here. Yeah. He might be. I, I, I have my suspicions about it. Not that it matters, but... He likes to drink. He said I like to drink. Oh, like why? I like the party, man. Yeah. He seems like a Jean-Claude Van Damme, yeah, you know? like, I went to Thailand and they drink the whatever. Yeah. It's all good. No problem. No no problem, Joe. No. No problem. Actually, you'd like my cousin. He's from France. He speaks just like GSP. Nice. He's got the whole, like, woo. Like, I had to hang around <laughs> him for a while and pick up that <laughs> accent. I can't quite get it. It's all good. And then the, just the last one, I know Kat Zingano was on Joe Rogan today. I would say skip that one. <laughs> uh, Not good. This is, no, it was all right. It's just, here's the takeaway. She was talking about the brain issues she's having right now. She has been having... I don't remember after which fight it was, here. but she says her motor skills were not working right. She's blanking out at times. Whoa. When she's sparring people, she's not recognizing patterns anymore, where in the past she could see if you're leaning one way, like what's going to happen. And yeah. 
she'll be in a jujitsu in a, in a position and then won't know like what are the options from that point interesting so she said she was doing I don't know three different kinds of treatments and whatever treatment she's doing now after four weeks has kind of helped lift that fog to try to get her brain back to some sense of normalcy Huh. Which is weird, but I mean, you see the the last couple of fights where, especially the last one, she just wasn't there, and uh -huh. she says uh, she thought that's part of her mental game. And I, you know, you could think about Cowboy how he, it always takes him a couple rounds, and she's mm -hmm. the same kind of fighter where you uh -huh. like you see her lose a couple rounds and then she'll come back. So she's she's got and with the shit with her her uh, husband that passed away. So I mean, she's got a lot of other shit going on. And then you add potentially some CTE stuff in. Yeah. Like there's a there's a lot going on with that chick. There is. So hopefully that all works out. And she said the UFC's insurance isn't paying for any of this brain shit because you basically after a fight you have 30 days to say here's all the shit that's wrong with me and if you didn't write that down none of it's covered. And Joe was kind of flabbergasted by that. Really. Like, well, of course your head's going to be fucked up. You just got knocked out. You got your brain bashed in by, like, Amanda <laughs> Nunes or right? whoever, yeah. you know? It's going to happen. Right. It's kind of retarded. Damn so. shame. What else you got for uh, some news? Let me see. I got one more thing. The next season of The Ultimate Fighter, as in what's happening right now as we speak, I think, are about to happen. Supposedly, they're going to potentially cut the show. Be done with it. Finally, after, like, 13, 27 how many years? seasons. 13 years... I think we're in 27 right now. Dana said uh, something about 13 years. It doesn't seem like long enough. No, I, but I think they do multiple seasons. In a year. Yeah, so, so they're, I, they're, I thought it was 27. It could yeah, be I was, yeah, I was going by years, but it makes sense. I have not watched the show in years, and nor do I have any desire to. Every time I do see it and turn it on for a second, I'm like, yeah, this is like, what you call it earlier? Uh, it's, it's watching the real world. Yeah, that's uh, it. It's not yeah. fucking 1989 no. or whenever that fucking show first came out, you know? Nope. Sucks balls. No, thank you. I'm happy about it. Cancel that sucker. There's much other better things to put on TV, and that's not one of them. Mm -hmm. What else you got? Well, I saw, if I can pronounce his name, Eric McGracken tweeted this out. He's talking about the new UFC ESPN deal. It was a $1.5 billion TV deal. This is all in. $300 million per year, 30 cars per year, $10 million per card. And then he kind of equated it out. It said there's 24 fighters per card, so that's 416,000 per fighter per fight. And then he just asked the question, hey, UFC roster, are you getting your fair share? <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, what do they get all that? That's interesting. Mm, not much. Because mm. Brent Agamotto tweeted this out. He said the UFC will maintain control of its production over the live events on ESPN, because that was kind of the question: Is ESPN gonna put their bullshit people like uh, no. who's that fucking guy with the m lipstick? Gus, oh, Gus, Gus Johnson. Gus Johnson, yes. These things happen in MMA. <laughs> put a fucking guy like that in, and he does put lipstick on. I'm pretty sure he does. <laughs> it was pink and pretty. It's weird. I like that mouth thing, go. And then uh, Brett also said Dana White, when asked about how this ESPN deal will benefit UFC fighters. ESPN has shown its commitment to not only UFC, but MMA. The amount of promotion our athletes are going to get now and what ESPN is doing with this new platform is going to be very big for the fighters. Huh. So, so what do they get? Pie in the sky. But it doesn't really even matter because they're not allowed to be individuals. So I, I, yeah. don't, I don't see how that's going to help. More them. exposure. What sponsorship does you even get? It doesn't None. even matter. Darren Till made fucking $5,000 from Reebok for headlining his own home country. Yes. Bullshit! I don't get it. That's his bullshit. Tries it. Yeah. <laughs> what else you got for news? Uh, that's it for me. All right. What you got? Mike Bond tweeted this out. He said, Former champ Chris Weidman is targeting to return to the Octagon in September or October. Mm -hmm. Who should he fight? Is his knee going to hold up? I don't know if his body's going to hold up. He was breaking down last time we were... <laughs> like I, I thought day. he had a hand injury, too. Yeah. And Knees, hands, Who knows hips. what's going on? Who should he fight? Somebody easy. <laughs> to start. Give, give him a warm-up. Man, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't have a good answer for that one. I wish I did. Chris Weidman. Nick I think he should, I was going to say, you should move up to 205 and face John Jones. There you go. 
Uh, and then there was a video. I don't know if I should pull it up. You'll probably throw up. Oh, said, the arm? No, a different one. This is Luke Rockhold re-injured his leg uh -huh. in training. Is it bad? And he, yeah. He, well, he tweeted out a picture, or actually video of it getting stitched up, but this is not for the weak it was stomach. A cut. Yeah. There's a big gash. Do you like gashes, Ingo? I love gashes. Okay. This sounds disgusting. Why is his leg all gashy? Oh, man, that's horrible. What's happened to him? I don't know. Probably shin on shin. I can't look. <laughs> I'm going to throw up. It's disgusting. <laughs> what do you say? It feels so it's good. It's so good. Yeah. <laughs> Sick fucker. This stuff doesn't even bother me anymore. That's how no. I've seen so much. You're weird. It's bothered, it's bothered me. I, I might pass out and be like, <laughs> I wake up. <laughs> Stick a finger in it. <laughs> Does it hurt? No. No, nah, if it's all numbed up. Was that it? No, just more. Mike Bond tweeted this one out. A stat. It said June 3rd represents the two-year anniversary of the first ever UFC early weigh-ins. So the two years leading up to that point, just 22 instances of fighters missing weight for UFC fights. In two years since early weigh-ins began, nearly triple with 62 fighters having missed weight for UFC bouts. So why are we doing the early weigh-ins then? If we're, uh, it, we had 22 people missing weight two years prior, and then since we have 62, so you have like a threefold increase. Um, it's for ratings, Matt? Yes, less fights, more interesting matchups. Yes, we're trying to ruin the sport. Well, they did. Well, I guess maybe the Fertitas are still trying to buy it back. Ruin it more. Make it worth nothing. I don't know. They just got one, a $1.5 billion TV deal. Yeah. Maybe Can't there's be. a bigger picture we don't see. I wonder if that's the case. Yeah, I don't, I, I've tried to play out the scenarios. I don't, I don't get it. Don't maybe get it. Maybe not supposed to. Yeah, maybe it's just one of those You're things like the judging. the circle of trust, Matt. I don't know if I want to be in that there's circle, circle of trust. There's you. You're out You're here. You're out here. <laughs> <laughs> You're outside. <laughs> and then MMA Fighting tweeted this out. They said, Dana White on Overeem being on the UFC 225 prelims. Mm -hmm. said, when Alistar Overeem sells as many pay-per-view buys as CM Punk does, we can argue. Uh, fair. How do you measure uh, what CM Punk is doing as the first fight on the prelims? Did they mention how many so sold so far? Any comments on this? No. I mean, it's a stack card as it is, so I don't. <sighs> again, I don't think what's on. The, and you're content to pay Alistair Overeem eight hundred thousand to fight on the prelims? Apparently. Well, they, maybe they're cutting their losses at this point. They just want to be done with them. Probably. I don't think he's going to stick around much longer. I see him either retiring or going over to Bellator. I thought he resigned. I don't I remember it was only what the three thing or four is. fights though. Small but aren't they doing those ten fight contracts like know. Anderson Silva? fights. I'm signed up till I'm 53. You know, Could be. keep fighting. Yeah. It's just weird. I, I just I don't know what to say about him. Let's move right along. Just see Sage Northcutt. I, I just refollowed him you on love Twitter. Talking about this, guy. I just refollowed him. <laughs> I, I can't. Like I can't get it. more pictures. Do you oil of him. up when you look at his Twitter? Do you like get all oiled up? And you're just like, oh, or let, me, let me log in. Finger in my ass, you know. <laughs> like perfect. <laughs> Try to go for two. It hurts. Ouch. Well, you know, I'm tough. So four fingers. Oh yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't do four? If you're not doing four. You're pussy. All five. Pussy. Years. Get the whole fist in there. That's right. He says he's about to play Fortnite after the UFC fights are over. So he's got his headphones on and his fucking cat shotgun. He's ready to go, Ingo. I'm not sure what's going on. The I don't know. software update happening on his <laughs> Xbox. He's all ripped with a cat. I mean, is he going to fuck that cat? What is going on? He looks like he's going to anally oh, gang rape that cat. Is, he may have this the funniest Twitter, the most animal, funny. Animal cruelty. Unintentional Twitter. <laughs> I, don't know it could be, I don't know. It may be animal Maybe cruelty. Maybe he's as high as fuck. He's like, let me hold this cat. I'm going to do, sh I'm gonna do work, <laughs> man. This is what I do. I play Xbox. I get, I get my cat. I get Come naked. Cat. I grease up. It could be a dead ripped. cat. Probably no. Maybe it's not even could be real. stuffed. Well, I think it's going to be stuffed. Oh, yeah. That's for sure. The North Cut sausage. Yeah, so I'm back in the North Cut game, Ingo. I didn't get my, wow. my quota for the week. You're so. crazy, man. That guy's the best. <laughs> Mr. Weigold. Hey, Mr. Weigold. Yes. I, I really appreciate what you guys do on the MMA Nuts. Oh, you're welcome. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Patriot Van Zandt confirms her boob job to TMZ. Yeah, you called it. She says, yep, I did get a boob job. I'm a girl, and I always want my own boobs. And they never came, so I bought them. 
Hey, I don't respect that. Good for you, Paige. Don't post a bick. I wish I had boobs. I might buy some of my own. I got them. They're overrated. Yeah. I'm talking about big bazonkers. <laughs> he said, he's doing his thing. Yeah, hey, let's do some ass nuts. Okay. Ass does nuts. Let's close it out. I'm bringing up a channel. <laughs> right, right into it. Okay. It's time. Pound sign does rule. Pound sign Matt Rape Chain. Pound sign Ingo Sugar Daddy. Pound sign motherfucker. Kick his ass. Okay. He's angry t this week. Yeah, you are. He's wow. very aggressive. Down. Simmer down, man. Very aggressive. Simmer down. Breathe. Count to ten. Backwards. What do you guys think of the second list of nicknames I created for MMA fighters and employees? Uh, which do you like and which do you don't like? All right. Artem T-Rex Arms Lobov. Uh, that's not bad. Uh, I'll give you the middle, a thumbs up or thumbs down. You're in the middle on that. Middle. Joanna, I tap the strikes in J-Check. I'll give you a thumbs up. Thumbs down. All right. Johnny Miss Waite Hendrix. Thumbs up. Thumbs down. Mackenzie Big Mac Dern. Thumbs up. We're double thumbs up. Michael Left Hook Larry Bisbing. That one's been around. Yeah. Eh, eh. Middle. Yeah. Nate the uh, Stockton Strangler Diaz. I like like it. that. Nick Ain't a Bitch Diaz. I like it. In Rich Need of the Face Franklin. Double thumbs down, like you it. son of a bitch. I like That's it. That's dirty. It's good. Dirty. Low blow, sir, but I like it. Steve the Immigrant Miochik. I like it. That, I think that was a. Uh, Joey Diaz, he's got the immigrant mentality. I think the last one's probably the best. Tyrone, the choosy one, Woodley. Ah, double thumbs dumb. up. <laughs> double you quadruple on that yeah, one. How many thumbs can I put up? Only two. A uh, uh, ton. <laughs> Ladies, you know what he's I talking about. I have to about. pull the one out of my ass. <laughs> That's three then. Isn't that a nursery rhyme? Little uh, Jack Corner. Oh. Is that, that in a corner? Right? Andrew Dice Clay? Something like that. Is that on a thumb? I don't know. I, I know Something like that. I, I know what you're saying. I don't know the joke. Though. I don't either. I don't remember. <laughs> Would you rather get your arm broken by Frank Mir, Tim Sylvia, or get KO'd by Dan Henderson, Michael Bisbing style? I'll take Dan Henderson KO. Of course. And then you're not breaking an arm. No. I'll be okay from that. The CTE is much better than a broken <laughs> arm. It could be. Depends how much CTE. <laughs> it's a lot of CTA. Maybe I'll take it. Uh, I've got a lot. It's all good. Would you rather suffer the indignity of being subbed by Pat Barry or be knocked out by Hoist Gracie? I'll be subbed by Pat Barry. He'll probably give me a hug after. Yeah, I wouldn't be too threatened by his submission. No. Or a knockout from Hoist, I don't think it's going to be too devastating. Either one. Just catch it flush. I'd rather take, yeah, I think the, agree. Sub by Pat Barry. Fuck, Mary kill. The WWD edition, number 11. You got Dakota Kai. And I don't care if that's not how you pronounce her last name. She's from New Zealand. Oh, hello. That's my bad. And Nikki Cross. That is also... These chicks are a little bit thicker. Yep. Oh, and... Like She's got some nice thighs. Mm -hmm. uh, Tanera Conti. Yeah, she's going to get killed. I'm not a fan of that one. Her face looks very uptight, but her body does work. Yeah. I'm going to have to marry the second one. That is, a, that is a nice smile, and it's, the first one just looks like... She, she, the first one looks like she'd be like that bodybuilder-style chick who's all, like, working out during sex. You, ever, you know what I'm talking about? No. It's like, what are you doing? <laughs> fucking working out at the moment? What's happening here? It's weird. <laughs> okay, now I'll try, marry her. Trying to work out for sweat. You probably like that. Uh, I'll be marry like, her. I'll fuck the like second one. She'd be, like, doing all, like, kickboxing, Taibo. The second one, yeah. Third one's got to go. She looks like she does work. I like the, like the dark eyebrows with the blonde hair, so yeah. I'm in. I'll fuck yeah. her, too. Whatever. Knowledge. You got any knowledge for this week? Uh, knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. I'm thinking, uh, thinking, thinking. Okay. So yes. I started watching. I'm in this program, master's degree again, psych. And mm -hmm. we, uh, somebody did a presentation on the show. It's called This Is Us. It's kind of a heavy show. And I'm really enjoying it. I watched about half of the first season. Um, I'm not sure if it's your kind of show, but it is, uh, it's pretty Will exciting. I cry? You might. Like, I found myself <laughs> getting a little weepy during this show. Then I'm out. A couple, of, a couple of times, I was like, damn, they got Fuck. me on this one. So there's a lot of stuff re revolving around, like, some, some kids and their dad who passed. And, like, there's all this family dynamic stuff going mm. on. It's a really good show. I know I'm late to the game. Only two seasons, but I watched half of the first. I really enjoy it. It's pretty good. It's not, hmm. you, might, you might dig it. I, th I think there could be some stuff that, you know. You I don't need stuff. Stir up some crap. 
<laughs> That's what I need. Mean. Let's stir up some shit. Yeah, you do. Yo. It's always good to stir up the crap, you know? Maybe that'll just float away then instead of being stuck, stuck at the bottom. Yo. Out of mind, out of sight? Yes. Okay. Push fine. that shit down and go. Nah. Just let it nah. bubble to the top. Nah. Like lots of loads. Just. Well, you're all about loads <laughs> I don't and know. fisting and sticking things in your ass. What's wrong with you, man? <laughs> I don't know. It's that time of the month. Or Apparently. Yeah. Do you have any knowledge? Yeah, I just say I saw the trailer for Battlefield Five. It's coming out in Whoa. October. What what setting is this? Uh, going back to World War Two. Apparently. I like it already. Uh, there's a woman in the trailer. Is she is she and No. <laughs> Damn said, it. it looks like she gets shot early in the footage, and at the end of the gameplay that they're showing, you're you're a man, and you're in. And another man's choking you out, and then she comes, and I think she fucking baseball bats the guy in the head and saves you, basically. Whoa. I like her already. And, uh... It's just weird. Do women have a place in a World War II game? Because I didn't... I think there were some women in World there War II, but... Do they have a place in a, a fucking war game? A I World War II game? Is that historically accurate uh, to have a bunch of women... Fighting on the fucking front no, lines? No, I think females were mostly like servant type personalities. Many different types of servants. Yeah, I got a problem with this. You do. Unless they're there with tits out. Tits out, killing fools. That's right. That'd be very distracting. I wouldn't know what to do if it's a female's trying to kill me and I just want to fuck her. Well, That'd I be... think that was what Tim Kennedy was saying. He said, I'm all for women in the military, but it's fucking super distracting when you get a bunch of killer guys. And you got uh, a woman there with you. Like, I get it. Like it's probably not good to interact with the men. They're ultra aggressive and whatever. But it, it, going back to a video game, it, it, they already jammed them in Battlefield One. When yeah. I, I do the load up screen for fucking Battlefield One, it looks like goddamn Rose Nama Junis, a bald headed woman, like a knife in one hand and a gun in the other. Like this is this is not attractive. Like you're you're killing my my thirst for blood right now by putting a woman mm. in this weird position. Mm -hmm. I don't think women should be on my video game. What if I mean, she's definitely having a on war time game. of the month and she has plenty of blood for you? That's fine. But it, maybe if she's naked, then I could support this. Oh, that's not going to be PG-13. That would be rated R game or X. If I can teabag people, senseless. Yeah, that's uh, allowed. The rules are funny. Not fan. I'm out. Okay. I mean, it's not going to stop me from buying a game, but I'm just of saying. Not. <laughs> You're like, ah, fuck I'm this out. game. I mean, I'm still going to play I'm it. still going to play it. <laughs> it's like... Yeah, it's fucking bad. It's coming out in the fall? I think October. Oh, okay. Like, they're already doing the... Beta? <laughs> no, Alpha. but they're already advertising it in-game on Battlefield 1. Okay. You know, it's coming. We got a trailer out, but... You know. Get your shit together. I don't think everything needs to be PC in a fucking war game, especially. No. Might yeah. be fun. Maybe I'll check it out. I don't know. I just don't like being a chick when I'm shooting other I hear people. you, man. So. What's our taping schedule for the next month before ah, we get out of here? So next week we are doing a Sunday. So the show will come out Monday, Tuesday, right? Something yep, one of Monday. Two. Monday. And then following July, June, July, and part of August, we're on a Monday schedule. So we'll be coming out Tuesday, Tuesday. Wednesday. Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. Just so you know. It's mixing it up a little bit. Yeah. We're getting back to... We'll try to keep it somewhat consistent. Yeah. But we'll give you a heads up. So if Mondays work, that could be okay. We'll see. But um, that has been yeah. this week's edition of Mad Minutes. My name is Nico Boyle. Matt Griffin. Thanks for playing. <laughs>